What the book was, it was designed to do, I think, what William & Mary does an extremely good job at. It was designed to take a general um, uh, view of things from many, many different um, points of view and bring them together. And so that's what we did. So we have a book now that has chapters that range as widely as how one calculates uh, how much risk is associated with mercury in fish, all the way up to uh, chapters on how one uses uh, visual arts or performing arts to communicate about mercury. And so what we were hoping is that anybody interested in mercury pollution or problems of the environment could pick up the book and dip into the chapters that interested them the most. So whether it was art, history, science, and then find themselves interested enough in the problem that they'd read more widely. Gold and silver, and to a lesser extent copper, have a natural affiliation with mercury. If you were trying to mine gold, even if you were just panning it from a stream, you could use mercury to draw the gold out that was so fine that you couldn't see it. You know, it's part of the Mercury Project, which is the um, group of faculty that are looking at the problem of mercury poisoning across disciplines um, here at the campus of William & Mary. The environment pollution is a big problem for my country because we are still a developing country. We need those electricity power. We need to feed all these people and we need to make sure everybody has an apartment to live. Mercury uh, several decades or a century ago was something that was usually associated with a particular um, occupation. Unfortunately, the sources of mercury now have become very diffuse. It's not just associated with, I work in this industry, in this particular street in town. Uh, because a little bit of mercury comes out of uh, coal power plants continuously globally. Mercury um, from a coal plant gets deposited in the atmosphere. Rain then uh, distributes it in the oceans. It affects the fish. Then humans eat the fish and we start the whole cycle over again. And so I began to see um, there's some things we really should be afraid of. You shouldn't eat tuna every single day and swordfish. It just simply is something that now you have to not be alarmist and not um, be uh, always frightened about, but it is something you need to be informed about and you need to make intelligent decisions.